Salute this program and welcome. It is Friday night, and that means it's time for the Rampage Cleanup Crew Review. Woo! That rhymed. Woo! <laughs> and this is a special night because this is our first live stream. And I am Adolfo the Nerdy Puerto Rican. I am here with I'm Alice. That's right. And together we are your plebeian perspective on things. Tonight was a rampage from the Prudential Center over in Newark, New Jersey, where our we backyard. our backyard, where we did go and see a collision last year. Yes, we did. Yep, we did. However, this rampage was taped on January 3rd, apparently. So it wasn't a live rampage, but let's get into it. What do you think? About the show in general? Yep. Let's get into it. Oh, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> not impressed. This was not the, like, it was like Friday night. Oh, it's Friday night. I like, guess it's Friday night. It's the vibe I got for this one. <laughs> it's Friday. So we started Rampage off with a six man tag. We had Mark Briscoe. And the Hardys, Matt and Jeff, versus Kip Sabian, The Butcher, and The Blade. As far as intro matches, it was right. It wasn't the worst I've, that I've seen. Mm -hmm. It got more exciting but towards the end. We did get to see some of the Hardys' signature moves. We got to see The Butcher and The Blade uh, a lot. We got to see uh, Kip Sabian hitting some, uh, some high-angle moves. And uh, we got to see uh, Mark Briscoe doing his thing. What would you think? Oh, so I didn't like this match. I thought it was boring. I thought everything was really telegraphed. I think there were a couple of botches. It was just overall it, the pacing too. It was very slow for me. It wasn't exciting. And the Kens didn't like, I don't know. They weren't really putting on a show. I don't know all their names. I'm like, I'm new at this, whatever. But there's the guy with the leopard and the blonde hair. Yeah, Kip, Sa Kip Sabian. Yeah, he's a cat. So Ken. He's a cat. He's um, a cat. <laughs> uh, you know, he was he's good. I've seen him be better than he was tonight. That's fine. And then camo pants. I feel like it was really obvious from the beginning that he was just gonna. It was like, oh, he's gonna he's gonna get the pin. He's gonna get the win. And then, wow, what a surprise! <laughs> yeah, Mark Briscoe did. Hello. We're saying hi. Mark Briscoe did get the pin after a, what was it? Jeff Hardy Swanton followed up by a Mark Briscoe Frog Splash on Kip Sabian. And, and then Mark Briscoe did get the I one too. I think that two. was the most exciting part of that match. Yeah. The Frog Splash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was meh, especially compared to a lot of the other Friday Night Rampage beginning matches that we had the last few months, or last few weeks, I should say. We had Orange Cassidy opening up. We had Orange Cassidy, Trent Barretta. We had Lucha Bros. And they, admittedly, they those groups do bring uh, high energy to to the match. It wasn't the biggest, best beginning match, but it wasn't the worst. I've seen worse. Believe so then that brought us to a spot where Renee Paquette was interviewing Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. I, I could have sworn Sammy Guevara was reading from a, a cue card. Yeah. This was not his brightest microphone moment. Yeah. This promo is definitely a weak promo. The big takeaway, though, is that we have Sammy Guevara facing off against absolute Ricky Starks on Wednesday Night Dynamite. I do think that shows promise. I do think that's going to be a good match. I do. I think that's a good matchup, Sammy Guevara and Ricky Starks. But this promo is just not it. Yeah. <laughs> just it's not rough it. Promo. <laughs> rough promo. And then after, because we watched it on, on TBS, so we had the uh, commercial cut. And when we came back from commercial, we had Renee Paquette with Anna Jay and the remnants of the Jericho Appreciation Squad. Holly Cameron came in halfway through, like Renee Paquette was asking Anna Jay how she felt about 2024. And then Holly Cameron came in and whispered something into a cool hand to Angie's ear and... I don't know what's happening. Weird. They always ruin, what's her name, Anna Jay? They always ruin her yeah. spots. There's always such great potential for her. And then something terrible happens. And that's not fair. Yeah. I just don't think they're ever fair to her. So I feel bad. But that was also a lackluster spot, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Also, who's Paquette? Renee Paquette is. Renee the, Paquette. Might, I don't know. She might have been having an off night because I just felt like. 
she wasn't great either. Right. In the interviewing, the, she was low energy too. Like it, maybe she felt some type of way about the spots or whatever, but she was not presenting her best self, I think. Right. But yeah. This was another really lackluster spot. I feel that Anna J definitely deserves to have spots where the Jericho, the remnants of the Jericho appreciation squad are not there. Are not there. I just want her to have a spot yeah. by herself. Yeah. Where she doesn't get all stomped all over, where she's talking and people are just not listening to her. Yep. And we would see more of Anna J later on in the program. But first, <laughs> we had Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale versus Notorious Mimi and Kennedy Hardcastle. I was excited for this match. Yeah. And then I was sort of <laughs> disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what was happening. This guy comes in and he's... Halfway. Reading this weird love poem about Chris Statlander. Thicker than a snicker. Yeah, what was that about? Thicker than a snicker. Okay. I'm uh, putting that in my Valentine card. Oh my yeah. god, I forgot my slides. Yeah, so uh, that that's our first. That was our first match. Oh, the Hardys. Yeah, we have slides. Yeah, look at that. The Hardys and and Briscoe and Butcher and Blade and Kip Sabian. So yeah, so the Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. I also don't like. I love Chris Statlander. She's great. I think she's a wonderful wrestler. I think she's also really good at like putting over other wrestlers that she fights with. But I like my heart belongs to Willow Nightingale, right? And so he like you're allowed to be obsessed with Chris Statlander or whatever, but then give the same energy to to Willow. Well, and that's very. I think that was part of his shtick, right? But it was like. Oh, so this is my question. Do you think that this is setting up some sort of storyline where the, the guy's name, the dude that, that made the poem, Stokely Hathaway, do you think that there is, that they might be building a story where he is trying to drive a wedge between Willow and, and Chris Atland? If they are, I don't like it. <laughs> do you just not like the execution or do you The just... execution is poor okay. and I don't like that idea. They just became good friends again. Like. Yeah. Can we have that for five seconds yep. before trying to split them up again? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And it would be nice if they, and I think I said this in one of the other reviews, that if they were the foil for the dark side that is Julia Hart and Sith Blue. Then put them together and keep them together right. instead of trying to do this weird whatever it was. Yeah, with Stokely Hart. Right, happening. they like he cut off the music and he interrupted the intro yeah, well, yeah, anytime. Really so, awkward. yeah, anytime Willow Stokely Hathaway would announce Willow, he would cut it really short and he really propped up Chris Statlander. But as far as the match goes, what'd you think? I think it was too short. I think it was too easy. I think that Chris Stat Chris and Willow, of course, deserve breaks and breathers and stuff, but I also feel like they deserved a better written show oh. or fight than they got. Okay. Well, yeah, at the beginning of the match, Chris and Willow, it, it was just like, a, it was a slam fest. They had Notorious Mimi in their corner and just kept picking her up and slamming her. And then... And that's, that gets boring. Yeah, and, and then the other spot was, which was a cool spot, I thought, was Willow double suplex both Notorious Mimi and Kennedy Hardcastle. So I that was like that pretty move. cool. Yep. And I guess Django doesn't approve either. Yeah, I'll go get him. Yeah. So that was that. Willow Nightingale and Chris Statland do did get the one two three, more to the point. Willow did get the the one two three, and then this brought us to a another spot with Renee uh, Paquette, and she was interviewing Matt and Jeff Hardy, and Private Party actually ended up coming in and interrupting the spot, and Matt Hardy, Matt and Jeff Hardy were giving props to Private Party and Brother Zay and and congratulating them for growing up. And almost seemed Matt and Jeff were tossing Private Party a little bit of shade in that in that promo. What'd you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that was the whole point. Yep. To set up a little bit of animosity between the two of them. Yep. I mean, after the I forgot which match it was, but they did put all of the AEW tag team division on blast, saying that they were going to come out come after everyone and they did actually call out matt and jeff specifically so it's going to be interesting to see if that's going to be the first match for them yeah i kind of hope that private party they push private party a little bit more than just with matt and jeff hardy and nothing against the hardys they 
they are or they should be in the hall of fame they were really explosive wrestlers but nowadays they're and i hate saying this but i just feel like that they're that they've lost some of their step this match tonight at the beginner they actually looked better than they looked last week because last week they especially especially jeff hardy they (laughs) he looked really haggard this week they looked a little bit better but yeah i really hope that they you know, put private party up against the Lucha Bros or Top Flight. So we have really like high energy versus high energy because that's the type of match that private party is going to be bringing. But then after that, we got our uh, third match of the night, which was Anna Jay versus Hikaru Shida. And I thought it was a pretty good match. What did you think? I liked this one. This was the match of the night for me. The, what do they call it? The last match. I mean, if it was fine, it was better i think than everything but i was excited about this one i thought it was good i thought they they exchanged like it blow for blow like for Mm -hmm. i thought anna j really showed up this time yes there are some times when anna j comes out and she fights and it's just what is she just there she's just like a lamp so they tossed around right but she really showed up they it was really touch and go there who was gonna win for a minute which i really liked yeah so this was a good one for me. Yeah, we Anna J definitely was dominant uh in most of this match. And uh, she did fight back. She did end up getting the uh, the one, two, three. There were some great spots though, like the I can't even read my notes. I need be- <laughs> I write like a doctor. Or you could just wear <laughs> your glasses. Or I could just wear no, I literally it looks like chicken scratch. I do have that, uh, that we had a reverse one, two, ooh, and then Hikaru reversed it into a one, two, ooh, and then Anna Jay reversed it into a one, two, ooh. Uh, but at any rate, it was, it was a good match. Not really happy that the, the Jersey crowd didn't really seem into it for as good of a match as it was. Yeah. yeah. It's New Jersey. Yeah. The crowds are mess. Yeah. We live here. I, I'm born and raised here. I can say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was a good match. And then after that, we had another spot where it was Jay Lethal and Sanjay and Double J Jeff Jarrett. And it looks like there's just some dissension in the ranks with the Jeff Jarrett camp. Yes. This, I think, was the best spot of the night. It was exciting. There was tension. There was story building. Everybody was like present i felt right. whereas in some of the other spots i was like hello is anybody home yeah yeah so this was good i thought yeah jeff jarrett called out jay lethal on all the losses that he had been mounting up in recent weeks and double j was touting how he had a win against eddie kingston in that texas concession stand fight or whatever and he had a win here and he had a win there and then Jay Lethal shot back he wouldn't have gotten that win if it wasn't for me or those wins if it wasn't for me going along with uh, the past few weeks where it looked like Jay Lethal is rebuilding his friendship with Mark Briscoe it actually there was some dissension here you know Sanjay and Karen Jarrett they started the spot by trying to have the this faction get a name because they don't have a name and yeah it just dissolved and they had to be separated it was cool i would not mind seeing a jay lethal double versus double j jeff jarrett match that i think that would be i think that'd be a cool match and double j so double j jeff jarrett you probably don't know and for any of the new wrestling fans that are out there double j is a wrestler that's been around for a long time since at least the late eighties, early nineties. And he is one of the few older wrestlers that are still around that I can say honestly does a great job pushing the younger talent and the newer talent. So kudos if they get that off and it helps to push Jay Lethal because Jay Lethal is a good wrestler as well. He fought in the Continental Classic, and he had some really good matches in the Continental Classic. So there's, and then after that, we went to commercial. When we came back from commercial, we had a short video spot of the Patriarchy and Christian Cage. Oh, and that was a spot. 
Yeah. I thought that was a commercial. Yep. Nope. That, that's a video package spot. A video package spot. That's what it's called in the biz. All right. Well, <laughs> it just made me mad about World's End all over again. <laughs> it happened to me. Yep. If you didn't watch World's End, we had Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland. And Adam Copeland. Radar, superstar. Radar, superstar. And Adam Copeland did end up getting the pin on Christian Cage and winning the TNT championship belt only to have uh, Luchasaurus, a.k.a. Switch, Kill Switch, Kill Switch, Kill Switch, Kill Switch, come in who had earlier won a contract for an on-the-spot title fight for the TNT championship contract that night, and he cashed it well. He went to go cash it in and Christian Cage jumped in and, and said a word to Luchasaurus, Kill Switch, and Kill Switch handed the contract over to Christian Cage. And Christian Cage was able to, because Adam Copeland had been knocked out, was able to just get the one, two, three and get the belt, the TNT belt back, which, yeah, it really. What was really an exciting match just really turned into such a sorely disappointing moment. Yeah. I Not to retread past matches, but I would have appreciated it if they would, if they waited to have Luchasaurus cash in on that. For if, a little it bit. felt he earned that. Why yeah. did we cash it in immediately? That's so frustrating and i felt like it was poor writing yeah um, and it's really making in my opinion it's, it's really making luchasaurus seem very spineless yeah and like they've been teasing this tension between christian cage, cage. Yep. and luke kill switch for kill switch. ever yeah and, and so he's supposed to be this big scary monster guy right yep and, and he gets treated, you're afraid of a human. Yeah, he right. Yeah, and he's that doesn't sound right. And he's in essence being treated like a little baby. So it, it, it's not even a little baby. He's being treated like Harry, like the the family that Harry Potter went to live with. What the Dursleys? The Dursleys. Yeah, he, the, it's like the Dursleys with uh, Harry Potter, with Killswitch and uh, Christian Cage. Okay. What you don't think so? It's an abusive relationship for sure. I'm just not sure that's <laughs> the connection I would have drawn. Do you think he, like, kicks him out of the broom closet? Yeah, because, look, he hypes up Nick What's-His-Face, and he hypes up the Nick's mom, right, Nick Wayne, right? He hypes up Nick Wayne. He's like, Nick Wayne, my my son, my ooh, the one that's going to inherit this, and then the, the matriarch, Nick Wayne's mom is the matriarch. I guess and then, I haven't seen enough spots with Nick in them. Yeah. To know that. Yeah. And then when it comes to kills. Oh, yeah. You didn't see the, the Wednesday no, Night Dynamite yeah. spot. Yes. On Wednesday Night Dynamite, Christian Cage and the Patriarchy, which is what his faction is called. They came out and they did a spot. And Christian Cage, he comes out and he goes, first, I'd like to thank Nick Wayne, my son, the future of the Patriarchy, who's who will one day inherit this belt. Next, I need to thank uh, the matriarch, Nick Wayne's mom, who I can't remember her name. And then finally, Christian Cage goes, and most importantly, I'd like to thank, and, and Killswitch is standing behind him, right? I'd like to thank the one person that made this all possible, me, Christian Cage. Completely blew Kill Switch off. Dude, I'm so ready to watch Kill Switch <laughs> take him apart. Like, right? Can, uh, can we just have that? Can you just please give that to us? Uh, give it to us, please. <laughs> I'm ready. We're ready. We're ready for that. So then this led us to our last match of the night, which was an ROH for the ROH Pure Championship. Following ROH Pure Rules, we had Wheeler Yuta versus Commander. I was afraid to say, but when I saw this match that it was Wheeler Yuta versus Commander, I figured Commander was going to be taking the loss but the match was good it was a good match wheeler yuda did a really good job at neutralizing commanders and his normal style because commanders it, being one of the lucha bros is very high flying going off the off the ropes and a lot of energy really fast offense and uh, wheeler was able to really keep him on the ground really went after the arm with a, a wrist lock wrist lock and to his credit you're right there buddy to his credit, C Commander really sold that arm, the arm that Wheeler Yuta was working on. He really sold that really well to the point where I was like, wow, did he really hurt his arm? I don't know if you noticed that at yeah. all. 
Okay. Yeah. But I he, agree. Yeah. He did a great job selling that. And I am going to, I'm going to be checking tomorrow to see if commander did end up injuring his arm. But yeah, because of that, Wheeler Yuta was able to, was able to have commander expend all of his uh, rope breaks. So in the ROH pure rules, you only get three rope breaks. And then after the third rope break, that's it. So if you grab the rope, if you're in some sort of submission hold, the ref won't won't break the hold and that is how wheeler ended up getting the the win because wheeler you ended up getting that wrist lock arm bar again on commander commander went to grab the rope and the ref was like nope and commander ended up tapping out wheeler Yuta retains your roh pure championship what did you think of the match it's good like i alluded to before I liked this match. I thought it had good energy. It was exciting. So definitely like the second half of Rampage was much better than the first Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. half. And I liked, it really felt like Yuta came into the ring, like with a plan. Yes. He's like, I've studied how this guy fights and I'm going to enact this plan. And it went off pretty much without a hitch for him. Yeah. Yeah. I liked that. I always find it interesting, the matches that have, like, different rules. Mm -hmm. I always find those interesting Mm -hmm. to watch because... So here's a question. Here's a question for you. Now that you have seen a few of these matches, are you able to tell when it is a different rule set? And are you able to follow along the... when the rules are implemented? Or is it still just, like... Higgledy piggledy. It's mostly higgledy piggledy, but for this one, they put the rule changes on the screen right before the match, and they very slowly talked about it. Um, I'm going to use uh, Julia Hart's match from World's End as a different example. Right. Um, so previously, so in her uh, efforts to retain the her belt, she's allowing. A single rule and then they just the house, yeah the, the house, house rule, rule or yeah. whatever and the announcers gloss over it and then i'm like we <laughs> lost in the sauce right <laughs> what's going on yeah and then i'm just like i'm trusting the ref honestly so, yeah but <laughs> yeah. for this one yeah this one i like felt like i knew what was going on and <laughs> a right hook but <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so I felt like I actually knew what was happening this time. Yeah, yeah. I feel like with the, I feel what they do with, when they do like the the ROH Pure rules, they really should do for the other matches, like the House of Black matches, where they put up on the screen, they explain to you, because it, it seems like for the, specifically for the ROH Pure Championship, those rules are more followed Whereas, like the example you gave, the, the House of Black match, it's, okay, what's the rule? I think we, we were all, right, buddy? I think we were all at a point just being like, wait, what's the rule? What's not right, the rule? what's going on? What's allowed? Is this allowed? Is any of this allowed? Yeah. So yes, Wheeler Yuta does retain his ROH Pure Championship. This was a good match. My only gruntulation is, and that's... Uh, I'm making that a word now, disgruntulation. My only disgruntulation is, again, Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta's characterization. I'm super stoked that they're showing Wheeler Yuta wrestling because I, I've said this I've said this in the past, and I'll keep saying this. Wheeler Yuta is a good wrestler. I'm just I'm frustrated with his characterization because I feel like they're trying to make him too much of a John Moxley, Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli clone being part of the Blackpool Combat Club. And I guess it's because he has to have the Blackpool Combat Club. They have that swagger that they all have to be like stereotypical tough guy situation. But I just, I don't know. It just, something's not clicking with that characterization that Willie Wheeler Yuta is using. But At any rate, so that brings our rampage to an end in Biconics fashion. We'll give it the empanada scale. As I had said before, though, I I only give whole empanadas. I don't give uh, partial empanadas. And if in 2024 we're doing this out of a a scale out of 10, I'm going to give this a five empanada. It was fine. 
it was it wasn't bad i i didn't check my watch to be like oh my god is this hour almost over have there been better rampages yes have there been worse rampages yes have there been worse shows yes this definitely was not wrestlemania 39 night two and as soon as alice puts the young one back to back to bed we will get her empanada scale so really quick we do have some news coming in so earlier this week reports that trinity fatu aka naomi is returning to the wwe a a contract has not been signed she is still with tna wrestling trinity fatu aka naomi when she was in the wwe she walked out with mercedes monet after their was a severe disagreement with the way that they were getting paid and the way that they were getting portrayed with the Vince McMahon regime. But now that Vince is gone officially, and also I think Nick Sabian, I think the dude's name is, I don't know. He was another Vince McMahon lackey. He got, he's leaving because he's all butthurt because Triple H is actually running the WWE like a, like a respectable company to its employees. Can you imagine that? Terrible. Right. But he's leaving WWE, so it does look like Naomi, once her TNA contract is up, is coming back. As per Fightful Select, something huge would have to happen for her to not end up back in WWE sooner than later, but this is a crazy free agent period. So that is coming three days ago. All right, Alice. Empanada scale, AEW Rampage, January 5th, and go. And we have to do whole empanadas. You could do half empanadas. I don't like. I don't. When have you ever seen me eat half an empanada? When you never. Thank you. But I'm saying, what if it's like frozen in the middle? I would just reheat it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I'm not saying you would ever leave an empanada half finished. But I'm saying it's it is possible. Empanadas can be half eaten. Fair. Fair. I don't know. It wasn't terrible. I think I'm going to go with a similar rating for you as to you. I was less, I guess, five, four and a half, maybe. But again, it wasn't like failing. It just wasn't, uh, it wasn't great. Gotcha. (laughs) Yeah, it it was meh. So thank you for joining us for this AEW Rampage Cleanup Crew live stream. We will be doing a live stream next friday as well until mikey gets back and then when mikey gets back we'll go back to just the normal recording so until then i'm adolfo i have to come up with something better to say because saying i'm alice kind of sounds like alice (laughs) so uh. (laughs) (laughs) we are your plebeian perspective from everyone here at the biconics just remember we're biconic you're biconic we're all biconics Hablamos luego. Peace.